before you guys came, we told them, you know, you represent Woga. And I asked a few of them, what is it? And I was like, well, this is the best gym in the country. And so with that comes a lot of pressure because you have to represent it the best. And we expect a lot from them. They know that they have a big name on their shoulder. A lot of people, when they come to meet, oh my gosh, it's Woga. And you know, they're super excited, but at the same time, they feel a bit of pressure and some girls are gonna use it and work even harder and feel like, okay, I'm gonna represent Woga and I'm proud of it. And some girls kind of crumble underneath it and so they don't last in, in that level. In, in this gym, we had this great opportunity to see even Cardi Parson when she was there and then to see Nastia. And plus, after Nasia, you had Rebecca that followed the footsteps of all those great gymnasts, and the whole gym gets better this way. Nasia always said that when she saw Carly winning the all around, she was like, wow, she trains in the same gym, same amount of hours, same equipment, she did it, so I can do it too. And I think that's what a lot of kids here come because Nasia and Rebecca and Caitlin, they all show them that. It's possible. You all can do it. If you try your best, if you really want to, then you can. And I think that's what it is here. It, it makes it a reality. It's n just not a dream. It is possible. If your kids did it, so why not you? Uh, first, I had already a group to start 2003, and I just look on the site where the classes go, and I, ju I just saw one kid running so fast, so quick. I just felt like I, I need this kid on my team. Why she's not in my team yet? So I went to that site and asked classes coaches, who is this kid and can I have her? And they said, yeah, she can try. And I asked parents, uh, you want to try it? They said, we don't know. They, they really didn't, didn't know, like, do you need this start or not yet? I said, she's looking like she's going to be gymnast. <laughs> and I think I saw something in her. I, I don't know, in that moment, I, I believe that that's going to be something in the future, so. When I first started classes at WOGA, before I got on team, um, when Natasha was picking a team, she told my mom that I wasn't too flexible, but that she would give me a try. She did first day practice, and I told her, mm, she's not that flexible like I thought, but we can work about <laughs> she, she told me this, but honestly, I don't remember, but yes, I said that, and yeah, I've been working hard, and she's pretty flexible right now. <laughs> watching the 2004 Olympics on TV because um, my coach Natasha, she coached Carly. So I remember it was a big deal at our gym also because that was the first Olympic champion uh, from Woga. And so I remember like the parties and everything after celebrating her success. I remember when I was little, I got a rip on bars and I started crying and my coach sat me down and then Big Evgeny, that's what we call um, Carly's coach, came over and he had Carly come over and show me her wrist and it was like full of rips. And he was like, does your hand still hurt now? And I was like, no. <laughs> and then I went back on bars. And I was like, whoa, that was Carly Patterson. <laughs> my hands don't hurt anymore. <laughs> I definitely remember watching Nastia train before she went to the Olympics and all the tough days that she had, but she just never gave up. Yeah, I remember her training in the gym, mostly leading up to the Olympics. It looked really hard, but I was like, that's still what I want to do. I think the 2008 Olympics were more of a big deal than 2004 because I just remember staying up late and watching those. I would like take naps before so that I could stay up like through half the night to watch her on TV. It was amazing watching her win because I actually had a relationship with her and so it was more like my friend one, not just like, oh, that girl from my gym one. So that was really cool. I probably realized 
that it's pretty rare to produce two Olympic champions like back to back right after Nastia won. I don't feel more pressure or anything because I know it's for your own success and what you can accomplish. Not everyone can accomplish the same goals, but if you work hard every day in the gym and with your abilities and talent that your coaches have taught you, you can definitely have the same outcomes. I'm gonna have to send the invitation for January. But I think I'm gonna decline. Maybe go in February if we can do something. Just even, mm -hmm. even not the same as everybody else, but just to be part okay. of, of the whole group. You know, again to motivate you. Okay. Well, I had surgery about four weeks ago on my wrist to kind of like clean things up. I had like a wrist problem since last year, but I decided to hold off of that because I wanted to make it the world's team this year and that went well, so I knew, knew I needed to do something after that. So I had surgery and um, it's going pretty well actually. It doesn't really feel like I've actually had surgery. So I, I know that it's like on the right recovery path and everything, but I still can't do that much right now. So it, it's frustrating watching everyone else like get better and stuff, but I know that there's like a lot, a lot of support behind me, and so I just have to keep myself motivated to keep coming back after this. Right now, I mainly do a lot of legs and all the upper body that I can do without my hands, but I mainly run, do all the conditioning that I can do, like legs, stomach, um, all the other core and arms and shoulders that I can do without putting pressure on my wrist. And then I can do some skills on beam and I just started like doing like some Arabians and stuff off side of beam for right now because I can't grab, so. The first year I was here, I was not working with her right away, and uh, I started working in 2008, I believe, with her. And I see that great potential physically. She was uh, she was very very strong physically, and uh, things were going her way very easily. So it was easy for her to to pick up stuff, you know, to pick up the skills and stuff like that. And uh, she had great abilities to make improvement very very fast. So it was uh, at the beginning it was very very easy. Well, it seems to me that uh, every year she's been injured, uh, which is not the case, but uh, it's just a feeling. I mean, even though she's very strong physically, her structure is a little bit weak, and plus the amount of hours that we are in the gym, it's, uh, it doesn't help. But this is the only way we can get to that high level, to, to be in the gym almost like 35 hours a week. So. But uh, other than this, no, she overcame all of them and, um, and I think she's going to be just fine. It was definitely good to have a little bit of a mental break because I was going since championships and I also did Pan Ams. Well, there's only a few people that did Pan Ams and Worlds. And so it was a little nice to get a mental break and just like a physical break for your body also. But there's those days that I just want to start doing things again. <laughs>
Maddie always has been, I think, more in the spotlight than Alisa. Alisa worked so hard, and since she was little, we had her when she just turned nine. And I remember walking in the gym, I was supposed to do a beam routine, and I didn't know, I didn't know Alisa. I just started here, they're like, well, she needs a new beam routine, she's moving up to level seven. And I was expecting a little kid, a little beam routine, two poses there and there, and then she'd get up on that beam, and it was just like, so sharp, and like, so, I don't know, more mature than I thought. And I was like, whoa, okay. And she wanted to do more like what Nastia was doing, more Nastia style, since she was nine. I've coached nine-year-old, and she was a different nine-year-old. After that, I started coaching her. You know, she started doing backward covers, and then she she loved beam, so it was easy. And then on floor, the same, doing a floor routine, and that's why I started knowing her a little bit better. Uh, spending a few hours just one-on-one -on -one to work on dance and all that and I was like, oh, she, she's different. She really, really wants this and she'll work hard. You know, almost like, stop, you know, that, that's enough. <laughs> I was playing tennis one day and I really was not having fun and I threw my racket across the court and I was like, I hate tennis! And my mom was like, oh my gosh, okay. And she's like, I'm embarrassed to go back there. And I was, she was like, why'd you do that, Alyssa? And I was like, I was afraid I'll be tired for gymnastics. She's like, oh, okay, I get it. <laughs> Uh, since the beginning, Alisa gave me 100% of herself, even more than that. I mean, she was a workaholic. She was working like I've never seen this before. And this is her strength. I believe if, even though you have the most successful gymnasts in the world, if they don't work, you're not gonna make anything out of them. And the older you get, it's a little bit harder to push yourself on an everyday basis, but if you believe like uh, in your dream and, you, and you, you see that you could, you believe in yourself, then it's easier for them to, to give a little bit more every day. When is up. But she was never on the spotlight. Oh, it's Elisa, look at her. Maddie was more that way. It was always Maddie since she was like five years old here. She uh, had so much talent, you could see it right away. Um, Elisa was not like that at first, and, but with her work, she caught up. Open where you have An example that happened Back. probably many times, that she's doing a series and I tell her to make a certain number and I turn around I'm like, you're not done? And she's like, yeah, yeah, but it needs to be better. Because that's enough, <laughs> you know, we could do it tomorrow, we can do it later. Um, and she's like, oh, that's not enough. She's, she's hard on herself, very hard. And sometimes we need to tell her, it's okay. You have to fall, you have to make mistakes, you can't be perfect. Um, it's part of gymnastics, this is my job. My job is to teach you, to coach you. It's, you know, it would be too easy if I tell you just something that was perfect. Um, I'll be home and you'll be here by yourself. So, no, she's hard, she's hard on herself. Well, for yeah, maybe that will look better. Do one more time switch ship and then Sison, because you both have Sison somewhere. Well, not anymore, but we need to work on it, maybe. Sison leap, Sison leap. Do switch leap again. Jump. Jump. 
Yeah, you arch, but your hip is not going up. Like your heel is not going up. You don't feel it. Now you open your hip on this zone. Same on two, three. Come on, up. You do better on the beam than you do here. It's all stiff when you come back. They're getting better. But she pikes a little bit. <laughs> it doesn't know that color. You only know the major, you know, you know, like blue, black, green. <laughs> It's not even green, it's like, it's a hybrid, it's a hybrid. It's blue and green. Green. What? <laughs> yeah, it's blue-green mixed together. It's green. Alright, come on. Nice. All the way. Still missing it a little bit. You're like really on the half a little bit here. Together, Caitlin. It's almost there. Up, yeah, and up. Oh my gosh, to take off like second turn. You're like too crazy slow. Easy, it's just a full turn. You don't want to go too hard, and you're kicking over there with you. But chick up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pull a bit more. Too much forward. That's it. Up. Mm. I can do so good in this. Gotta be more consistent. Well, I did gymnastics for, I don't know, maybe. 18 years, uh, competed for France a long time ago. And then since I've been little, I always wanted to coach in the US. And I was coaching Marseille, um, South of France National Center. And my former coach worked in Oklahoma uh, with Bart Connor and Nadia. And uh, she told me that they were looking some for coaches. And I was, what, 24 at that time? And I was like, yeah, I want to try it. And so I asked Laurent. I'm like, do you want to try it? Because for him, it was good in the South, and um, that was never his dream or goal to go in the U.S. And I went to visit. It was okay. You know, Oklahoma is not, I don't know, compared to the South of France, that wasn't that great. But I knew it was a stepping stone to, toward the goal we had. And we moved there 10 years ago and started coaching for three years and after three years we had Juliet, daughter and um, we wanted to do a little higher gymnastics level and Oklahoma wasn't where we could do it. So I had a banquet, uh, Laurent met Evgeny Marchenko and started talking saying that we're looking for a job and we're about to move to Florida because we had an offer over there and Evgeny was like, wait, hold on, you guys have done an amazing job in Oklahoma. so." come to us, we're opening a new gym. And when they offer the job, we're like, how can we pass this? You know, working with Valeri and Evgeny and Natasha and Natalia and Lori. And every time we saw them, we were like so impressed. It was Volga. They always were on top three podiums all the time. They look great. I was like, Natalia's coach Nastia and multiple girls going to nationals and, and worlds. And Natasha was Cardi's coach. And I had done nothing. You know, I had level nine and level 10 nationals uh, qualifiers and one girl went to college and that was it. And so all I knew for me at that time, I remember thinking they only hire Russians and they're like crazy, like work so hard and just they're too good for us. And they were like, yeah, we really like what you've done, so come on over. And we're like, we, we have to take the chance. If they're willing to give it to us, we have to take it. When we first arrived here, we were kind of uh, 
you know, you're a little bit afraid because you don't want to decrease the level of gymnastics that uh, they've been applying for their gym and the, the, the amount of result that they, they, they used to have. And so you need to keep up. You need to, to produce and you need to, to show great gymnastics. And uh, this is why it was very important for me at the beginning that uh, both Evgeny and Valeri were in the gym and working and and we try to motivate each other, you know, it's, uh, it's like the gymnast, it's very hard to work in the gym alone. You better have your teammate around you and that's going to that's gonna help you to get better. A team helps the individual to get better. It's hard to make the other way around, so... This has been at WOGA probably just as long as I have. I think I started getting to know her probably around level nine because she was always a level um, lower than me. But in level nine, right before I tested elite, she was eight going nine and she kind of followed in my footsteps and tested elite right after level nine also. I just knew her as she was like such a good gymnast and I was like, oh, I want to be like her too. <laughs> and now we're like competing together, so it's pretty cool. After our first um, championships together in Hartford in 2010, um, we started getting to know each other more and because we trained more together and everything and we had the same schedule so it was easier to hang out after gym or carpool to school, just everything like that. Um, me and Madison are really good friends now, um, not just in the gym but outside the gym and so it's really nice to have such a good relationship with her because Going on assignments, it's kind of hard, you feel lonely, but I always have a friend there, and so that's great. Hey there. Yeah. Madison is a really good gymnast, especially on bars. That's like her best season. Mine. And so I'm always like, Madison, how do you do bars? Can you help me with the bars? And then she tells me on beam. She's like, Alyssa, help me on beam. I'm like, OK. Yeah, the second one was better. The first one you shot out to her. Try and get your toes on the eight. That was better. You're a little close to the bar, but I, I mean, you can't pull just to get to the high bar, so just your legs a little bit. I think you just turned a little bit early. It look, it's a lot better, though. Huh? Show you something good. my hair. It looks good. Called him Lauren. They were like Lauren, <laughs> or like because it's spelled like Lauren. Yeah, so. Lauren. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know his name. Anything. I didn't even know what to say. I feel like coach. <laughs> With all my gymnasts, I know what they can do, what they can achieve, uh, so I coach towards that. They don't realize this at the beginning because they think I'm crazy, they think this or that, but if I don't believe in, in them, you know, they will never believe in themselves. So I might show too much enthusiasm or belief in themselves that they don't even have at the beginning and then little by little, they, they start trusting themselves a little bit more and then realize that, I'm, yeah, I'm not as bad as I think I am or I'm, I'm as good as everybody else, even better. Oh man, we had a rough time before World Championships. <laughs> she had a bad fall 
and couldn't move. Are you serious? Another injury? And she at first was like, I can't follow that plan. I'm never going to be ready. I mean, for us, it's a meet. Podium training, you win world championships at the podium training. If you show great consistency and great work, people remember that. I heard from Laurent, he was saying, they ready, we ready. They look perfect. One day, I think she had to decide, okay, I work too hard to not make my routines.